damn phones. Babylon's can't crack the code. What do YouTube? B Kelly back again with another banger video. And in today's video, y'all, I am going to be talking about current college football stars that were extremely underrated coming out of high school. Now, just like I do for every other video, I am going to be using the 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings. And before I move on, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, as we are on the road to 10k. Now, let's get into it. The first player I am going to be talking about in today's video is Michigan State running back and Heisman contender, Kenneth Walker III. In the 2019 recruiting class, he ranked outside the top 2,000 and was the 143rd best running back in the nation. He held a total of eight offers coming out of high school from schools such as Wake Forest, Kent State, Arkansas State, Illinois State, Indiana State, and Old Dominion, just to name a few. He would end up going to Wake Forest. He would spend a total of two seasons at Wake Forest as a member of the Demon Deacon football team, and he was an immediate impact player, and he was a good one as well. In the two seasons he was there in 2019 and 2020, he played on a total of 20 games, had 1,158 rushing yards, averaging 5 yards per carry, and 17 total touchdowns on the ground. But going into 2021, he would transfer to Michigan State. Currently right now, as of the recording of this video, in the 2021 college football season, Kenneth Walker III is a top running back in the nation for Michigan State and seen as someone that could potentially even win the Heisman Trophy this season as the Heisman, in my opinion, is fully open to pretty much anyone that's having a great season. So far in his junior campaign in 2021, he has played in eight games. Michigan State is undefeated and 175 rushing attempts. He has 1,194 yards, averaging almost seven yards per carry and 14 total touchdowns on the ground this season. Kenneth Walker is a straight beast. Next up, I have Nevada quarterback Carson Strong. Now in the 2018 recruiting class, Carson Strong ranked outside the top 2,000, was a three-star recruit and the 76th best pro-style quarterback in the nation, and he only held one Division I FBS offer coming out of high school, and that was from Nevada. Obviously, with that one offer, he would end up going to Nevada. He would redshirt as a true freshman in 2018, then as a redshirt freshman in 2019 when Nevada had an open three-way quarterback competition. He was the main quarterback for Nevada that season and the main starting quarterback at that as he played in 10 games, completing 63% of his passes, throwing for 2,335 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. Overall, a solid season. In 2020, he came back as the starting quarterback, this time in 9 games played due to a shortened season. He had a lot better of a season with a starting season under his belt, and this time he would complete 70% of his passes, throw for 2,858 yards, throw for 27 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions. So far in this 2021 campaign of his, he is seen as a top quarterback and a top quarterback heading into the 2022 NFL Draft if he does in fact declare now. This season he has completed 71% of his passes, thrown for 2,883 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions, and he's only getting better as he goes on. To flip the switch and switch over to the defensive side of the ball, the next player I'm going to be talking about is in my opinion one of the best linebackers in the nation and that is none other than Malcolm Rodriguez. Now Malcolm Rodriguez in the 2017 recruiting class ranked as a three-star recruit, the 1,529th best player in the nation and the number 33 dual threat quarterback because this guy was a threat on both sides of the ball. He only held two offers coming out of high school, one from Oklahoma State and the other from Wyoming. He would decide to stay in state and go to OSU. In his first season at Oklahoma State as a true freshman in 2017, he would be a backup for the Cowboys, but he would still rack up 11 tackles, eight of them being solo. When 2018 came, he was a main factor of that Cowboy defense, as in 12 games played, he had 83 total tackles, five tackles for loss, one pass deflection, and one forced fumble. He had a big 2019 campaign as a junior with 103 total tackles, seven tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, one interception, one touchdown, three pass deflections, one fumble recovery, and one forced fumble. But in 2020, as a senior, he had a monster season at the linebacker position with 82 total tackles, four tackles for loss, three sacks, 
three pass deflections, one fumble recovery, and seven forced fumbles. He decided to come back for another year with the extra year of eligibility that was given to all college athletes and take a fifth year at Oklahoma State. And he's not disappointing so far in 2021 for the Cowboys. As in eight games played in his fifth year campaign, he has a total of 77 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, one pass deflection, one fumble recovery, one touchdown, and two forced fumbles on a top defense in the nation right now. He was a guy that was not really sought after coming out of high school, but he's turned out a very good career with 356 total tackles, 23 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, one interception, one touchdown, eight pass deflections, three fumble recoveries, and 11 forced fumbles in his career. And his career is not even done yet because he still has the rest of the season to complete. Sticking with the defensive side of the ball, this one might surprise y'all, and you guys might even call me out for even putting him on this video, but this is my video, and I thought he was still very underrated coming out of high school. And that's none other than Jordan Davis, arguably the best defensive player in the nation right now, and if there's a defensive player that's going to win the Heisman this season, it's Jordan Davis, as right now he has the best shot and the best odds. But coming out of high school in the 2018 recruiting class, he was a three-star recruit, ranked as the 424th best player in the nation and the 29th best defensive tackle. Not only that, he only held a total of eight offers coming out of high school. He would end up going to Georgia. Started off his career at Georgia as an immediate impact player in 2018. As in 10 games played, he had a good year with 25 total tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks. He had a good sophomore campaign in 2019 as well with 17 total tackles, 4 tackles for loss, and 2.5 and sacks. In 2020, in a shortened season, he only appeared in 7 games, totaling a total of 16 tackles, 1 tackle for loss, and 1 sack. Now, this is his last season at Georgia in 2021. He's a senior. He's going to go to the NFL after this season, more than likely, unless he takes a surprising year of extra eligibility that was given to everyone last season but I highly doubt it right now as this guy is completely balling out on everybody right now in seven games played in his senior campaign this season he has 20 total tackles three and a half tackles for loss and two sacks every game he's played in he's causing havoc for the other team and he's on one of the best defensive teams in the nation right now number one in my opinion and no one's stopping that defense and it's hard to game plan against them especially when you have Jordan Davis on that defensive line you never really hear of an interior defensive lineman competing for a Heisman trophy but the defensive player with the highest odds right now to win the Heisman is none other than Georgia defensive lineman Jordan Davis. Taking it back over to the offensive side of the ball, the final guy I'm going to be talking about in today's video is Cincinnati quarterback Desmond Ritter. In the 2017 recruiting class, he was a three-star recruit, ranked as the 1,657th best player in the nation and the 116th best athlete. He only held one offer coming out of high school, and that was from none other than Cincinnati. And as you know, he's at Cincinnati right now, so he would end up committing to Cincinnati. After redshirting as a true freshman in 2017, once 2018 came by, Desmond Ritter was the starting quarterback for Cincinnati, and he had a good freshman season to say the least. As in 13 games played, he completed 62% of his passes, threw for 2,445 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. On the ground, he rushed for 583 yards and 5 touchdowns, and led Cincinnati to an 11-win season. In 2019, as a redshirt sophomore, he would regress just a little bit, but the team was still having a lot of success, and he was still having a solid season, where he completed 55% of his passes, threw for over 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions, and 5 touchdowns on the ground. In 2020, it would be his huge breakout season as Cincinnati would make their first New Year's Six Bowl and their only loss was in that New Year's Six Bowl to a very good Georgia squad and it was off a game-winning field goal. In that season, he played in 10 games, completed 66% of his passes, threw for 2,296 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions, but on the ground he rushed for a total of 12 touchdowns. 
Currently in 2021, Cincinnati is 8-0 and stand at number 2 in the AP Top 25 poll. And Desmond Ritter has been going off as well as a top quarterback in college football, completing 64% of his passes, throwing for 1,847 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions, as well as 3 total touchdowns on the ground. And not only that, he is seen as a top quarterback heading into the 2022 NFL Draft. Well guys, if you guys made it this far in the video, drop down your thoughts on this series if you want to see more of these kind of videos in the future. And before you head out, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe for more videos. B. Kelly, out!